The first thing that I remember is the light, bold and bouncing. Then came my eyes. I began to see just before I could feel my chin or knew that I had hair. Soon I could look down and find feet and hands, a chest with no air, no lungs to fill. But soft and supple were my insides, and real enough to beg for something more than a simple mere existence. What was it that gave me this life? What was it that made me need more? Who would be so cruel as to endow me with desire that would lead to such sorrow, such loss? Perhaps this is God. But I'm not concerned with God now. I'm only concerned with what I thought was mine. She was beautiful and found me fascinating. I felt her eyes piercing. And in that moment, we were drawn towards one another. We laughed and talked with a tone of a familiar song. I paid for her purple drink as she asked me to take her home. We danced, creating static energy between her feet and the carpet, and my eyes felt as though they could float out of their sockets, blinded, without the need to ever see again. And then something very peculiar happened. The night, like a blanket drawn, grew heavy, and the sound of 10,000 race cars entered my head at such a terrific force that I began to feel like it was natural and had always been happening. In blurry memory, I can still feel her hands on my body, her many hands on my soul body, like shadows tearing at the fabric of my being, cutting into my fibrous meat. I alone took a glimpse at the greatest light, the most forever never minding my capture into infinity. I felt the glow slip away, and I returned to sensations in my fingertips, and a notion of a head, a kneecap, like an island in a sea of ice. All I could see was light, bright but dulling, and I waited for my heart to sink as I looked around me and found nothing familiar or pleasing. I cannot claim to have ever noticed a function in my chest, but in the absence of such unknown functions, I began to understand. This is why we choose to forget.